Hi, my name is Summer Hamoud. I'm from the Rothman Orthopedic Institute in Philadelphia. Today, we're going to demonstrate the repair of a radial meniscus tear utilizing the hashtag suture configuration. So this is a right knee. We've created a radial tear at the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. This is often seen at the same time as an ACL tear in young patients. This can have kind of very frayed edges as well. So these can be very challenging to repair, but are really critical for the young patient and the long-term health of their joint to get a nice repair. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. What I'll say is that here I'm coming through my initial lateral portal, which I like to make a little bit higher. But I almost always, when I do a lateral meniscal repair, because I like to come with my implants to the posterior horn from the ipsilateral side, is that often create a more inferior portal. And so you can see this line of trajectory towards the meniscus is much more direct and allows us to get around the condyle without scuffing the condyle. So that's just one nice point there. I like to use these atraumatic, very small, like the torpedo or the curved 4 shaver to prepare either meniscal capsular junction or tear edges. And I'll typically just use it on forward, uh, no, no suction. But in these challenging ones, you can use a rasp as well for sure, but you can use this to freshen up the uh, tear edges to enhance the biology and ultimate healing. You can always come away and use your suction. So we're going to utilize the hashtag uh, suture configuration here. And so for this configuration, I usually place my ripstop sutures on either side of the radial tear first. So we'll go ahead and start there. So I'm going to come in on the ipsilateral side. Again, when you come in with your sled to introduce the implants atraumatically, this is a nice way to confirm your ability to reach all points on the meniscus that you want to uh, reach with your implant prior to inserting the implant into the joint or deploying one of the limbs. So this I like very much. So in order not to injure the uh, condyle, I'll typically flip that like that and it'll bring it in. I'll get as close to the radial tear configuration as possible. I'll come in, I'll puncture into the meniscus tissue and then reduce the meniscus. So in this case, this is a radial tear, so you want to provide compression. So you don't want to distract the position of your implants by directing it more laterally. Um, so we're going to go ahead and come through the capsule here, but kind of directing a little bit more centrally or medially. So here we're deploying our first and then we'll come into the meniscus tissue for our second. Again, utilize the curve in order to puncture the meniscal tissue. And if I go a little bit too far, I can always retract it a little bit gently so we can actually see the backside on this. And then again, we're going to go ahead and reduce that. So for these ripstop sutures, these do not need to compress the meniscus significantly against the capsule. They're uh, purely really providing our biomechanical ripstop um, for our horizontal mattress sutures. Go ahead and cut that first one. So we'll come in for our second ripstop suture. You can see here the atraumatic tip on this guide can help us reduce the meniscus and assess our positions. So in this situation, we also have to be, we're getting close to the midline, so we want to be cognizant of the vessels. But oftentimes, it is a little bit more useful to direct the uh, curvature towards the midline initially, but then I will turn it away as I have here. Um, to avoid the midline structures more centrally. Again, always start peripherally with these because you'll obliterate your view. It'll just be more difficult to work behind the initial suture if you start centrally. Here's our second ripstop suture that we've placed. So now we're going to go ahead and introduce our first uh, horizontal mattress stitch. Come in with our guide again. Again, Always important to start peripherally first um, and then progress centrally. It's important for those ripstop sutures to be as close to the radial tear as possible uh, because sometimes you run out of real estate here, particularly as you get closer to the root. 
So we'll start with our more peripheral stitch, again, angling away from the vascular structures. And here, as you see, we're utilizing the uh, fiber stitch 1.5. And with the much smaller puncture holes, we can get really complex configurations really nicely. See that nice compression happening with the first compression loop and now the second. We'll use our knot pusher cutter to complete the tensioning. So here we have that final tensioning, nice compression across the peripheral portion. All right, here we're gonna put our more central. So here we see our initial tensioning of our more central stitch, which is coming out really nice. I'm someone who doesn't mind a little bit of over-tensioning on radial repairs, um, because in case there is any loosening as with weight bearing and compression, ultimately, which I restrict for the first six weeks, I like a little bit of over-reduction initially. And so here now is our final kind of introduction with the knot pusher cutter. We can do our final tensioning and do our cut. So this is our final construct. So again, our rip stop sutures, because again, most of these clinically, these edges of the tear are typically a little bit friable. You get a little bit of a mop end type appearance, even in young patients, they can be quite devastating. So sometimes you have to position these rip stop stitches even further away, but try to get them as close as possible without them ripping through. But the ripstop stitches, if you're just relying on these horizontal mattresses, you may easily get that rip through. So this is just a really nice construct for these very complex and challenging tears, which fortunately are not very common, but really present the sports surgeon some of their most challenging cases.